The gospel of peace is good news. The whole world needs to hear this. Your friends and your family need to hear this news. Your neighbors need to hear this news. Even the strangers that you run into at the gas station and the grocery store, they need to hear this news. Why? Friends, because the whole world is damned already. John chapter 3 tells us that. They're condemned already because they don't believe yet on Jesus. Because of their sin. They're damned already because of their sin. They don't need someone to come out and go going around condemning them for the Son of Man did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. They need to hear the good news. Now, some people do need to be you know, brought to the understanding of, of what, because they have a, you know, a false assurance thinking that they're a good person. So yeah, I mean, you know, people need to be confronted with the, the law of God. Hey, welcome to Never Forget the Blood's Worldwide Bloodcast. My name is Brother Barry, and we're here bringing you freedom from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. Today, I'd like to share with you a clip from a series of messages that I've been asked to share with the with the church we've been serving in uh, on personal evangelism. And I believe that this will be a blessing to the body of Christ, and I want to share this with you uh, to encourage you in your faith and equip you in your study of God's Word and to spur you on to love and good works. So if you're ready for this, let's hop into it. John 20, 31. Okay, so that's our introduction, all right? We're about halfway through. Um, but, uh, you know, just let me reiterate. God requires our obedience in fulfilling the Great Commission. But friends, you can, you can trust God. You can have every reason to be confident in Him in obeying this Great Commission because it is God which works in you both to will and to act according to His good pleasure, right? It's God who is working in you both to will and to act according to his good pleasure. So, do all things without murmuring or disputing. Friends, again, there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. What he says we will do and where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. So, what are we obeying God in tonight? What are we talking about? Winning souls to Christ, the necessity of personal evangelism, why you should be a soul winner, why you must be a soul winner. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army movement, said, Let us go after souls. Go straight for souls. Go after the worst of them, lest another come along after us and remove our crown from off our heads. The great John Wesley is quoted, You have one business on earth to save souls, and may God save us from living in comfort while sinners are sinking into hell. And one of my favorites, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he once said, To be a soul winner is the happiest thing in the world. Because with every soul you bring to Jesus, you seem to get a new taste of heaven here on earth. Have you ever experienced that? I know, I, I'll tell you, I'm, in his, I'll boast in my weaknesses, you know, so that his power can just continue resting on me. But, I mean, you know, there's tons of times when, like, God will move on me to, to sh share the word with somebody out on the street and, uh, you know, that timidity you know, just like, you know, comes over you and you, you know, you start overthinking things and, and all that. But, you know, when you just give in, it's, you know, when you learn to trust God, obedience is easy. Okay. But, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? Or they'll, they'll, they'll kill you. They'll just send you to Jesus, right? What's the worst thing that can happen to you? I have had guns pulled out on me. I've had rocks thrown at me sharing the gospel, you know, but like what? It doesn't matter. Like, we've got nothing to lose. We have everything to gain. To die is to gain. Amen? So what, what are you going to lose by sharing the gospel? You're only going to win. <laughs> You're only going to win. Oh. And, uh, you know, I'm just glorious. We have one business. That's right. One business on earth. To save souls. All right. So, uh, Romans 10. Let's turn there, okay? Romans chapter 10. 
We're going to start at verse 8 and read down to verse 15. Okay, Romans chapter 8. I'm, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 15. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Friends, if you are proclaiming and publishing the gospel of peace, then you have beautiful feet. And I know my face might not be much to look at, but I can testify by the word of the living God right here that my feet are beautiful, no matter what my wife says about them. (laughs) Amen. The gospel of peace is good news. The whole world needs to hear this. Your friends and your family need to hear this news. Your neighbors need to hear this news. Even the strangers that you run into at the gas station and the grocery store, they need to hear this news. Why? Friends, because the whole world is damned already. John chapter 3 tells us that. They're condemned already because they don't believe yet on Jesus. Because of their sin. They're damned already because of their sin. They don't need someone to come out and go going around condemning them for the Son of Man did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Amen? They need to hear the good news. Now, some people do need to be, you know, brought to the understanding of of what, because they have a, you know, a false assurance thinking that they're a good person. So, yeah, I mean, you know, people need to be confronted with the, the law of God. And, you know, but they need the good news. The good news. This is what saves. Verse 8, look at this. What is the word that is nigh thee? What is the word that is nigh thee? What is the word that is near you? What is the word that's supposed to be in your mouth and in your heart? What is this word of faith that we preach? Well, if your Bible is like mine, then there's a, a punctuation mark here called a colon. And, uh, you know, what that means, that w- what follows this is the, the definition of what he's talking about. So what is the word of faith? It's this right here. This is the word of faith that we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Hey, so thanks for joining us in this. And if you want to get notified uh, when we release more uh, material just like this, especially in this series of personal evangelism, uh, please uh, subscribe to this channel and click the little uh, bell to get notified when we release more material. So God bless you all. And just until next time, friends, see to it that no man steal thy crown and never forget the blood.